What's up, y'all? Sparta here. Now, for this video, what I want to do is talk about the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 with Android 12. Now, this is not going to be a full comprehensive like breakdown of how this phone works with Android 12 and whatnot, since I haven't really um done a complete deep dive since this isn't my main phone. But I did at least want to bring this up for the people that may still have a Note 10 and or even have a Note 10 Plus and want to see how well a Snapdragon 855 on a Samsung phone fares with, you know, their overall software, what they decided to, what Android 12 features they decided to implement and all that other stuff too. So, yeah, right off the bat, what I can say is that the phone doesn't necessarily feel slower at all. It actually feels as fast. Now, to be fair, this is factory reset. I did just recently factory reset it again because I'm um, giving this to my girlfriend so she could use it. But in terms of me and how I've been using it when I was using it, I'd use it for just basic stuff like watching YouTube, playing, not not high highly intensive games like say a call of duty mobile because quite honestly the one mark three kind of spoils me in that department with its screen and its refresh rate and its touch sampling rate and it kind of feels very choppy on this display so that has nothing to do with android 12 that just has some that just has everything to do with display technology nothing that the nothing against the phone in particular that's just how that's just how it's working for me. Um, so what has Samsung brought to the table with Android 12? The quick toggles look exactly the same as it did on Android 11 with One UI 3.0. Now with One UI 4 and Android 12, all this stuff looks the same. Like, for example, I'll go to the One Mark 3 here. And um, as you guys can see, it doesn't have these quick toggles. It has the old quick toggles, which I honestly prefer for things like this. When I tap on the Wi-Fi thing on a stock Android 12 phone, it does this rather than just turn it off. Whereas on Samsung, I just tap it and it turns off. I tap it back on. It turns back on. I press and hold. It goes into Wi-Fi. The only thing that I feel is pretty nice about Android 12 is I can disable data and I assume if I also have another SIM in here, since my One Mark III is a dual SIM phone, it will also bring up the secondary SIM for that as well. So I could turn off data or Wi-Fi to my heart's content. And I, honestly, I think that's pretty cool. But it kind of comes at the cost of the convenience of me just being able to tap on it and make it uh, go away. Now, that's not that big of a deal. But it's just something that I've noticed. Something that I, it takes a bit getting used to if you're coming from Android 11 going to Android 12. Um, oh yeah, this doesn't. I don't have the fingerprint sensor set up. When I did have it set up, it's as fast as it always was. This fingerprint sensor is still wicked fast and really don't have any sort of issues with it. Other than the fact that it's in display, I much prefer either rear fingerprint sensors or back or side mounted ones in the power button and whatnot. But overall, I do feel like the fingerprint sensor in the display of this is still very good. It's very fast. It's accurate. It does still have the typical Samsung problem of scanning my thigh when it's in my pocket, but that's nothing I can really hold against this phone itself. It's pretty much every Samsung phone I've had with an in-display fingerprint sensor, which is this and the S20 FE and the S21 Ultra. So there's really nothing different coming from that. Um, this does have Material U. So a lot of people are kind of bummed that the One Mark III doesn't have Material U. Honestly, I, per I don't care. Mainly because, mainly due to the fact that it changes very little. <laughs> it really change. It doesn't change much. Like all it does is it gives you accent colors for your notification shade, the Google Play Store. Like once it loads, anyway. Like 
this, depending on whichever color it has, like say if it's a more magenta, the bottom bar will be in magenta and stuff like that. But overall, it's not anything that I would say is necessary. It's a cute little feature. But Google's, Google basically saying that they want manufacturers to utilize Material U just honestly doesn't make sense to me because it it's not that it's not it's not that deep of a feature it's not that great in terms of customization i think it's just very surface level <laughs> because all it does is uh, all it does is i go to a wallpaper and say i want this i do home screen i says set home screen and this is all it'll do and it'll still allow you to keep your old setup, but that's all it'll do right there. So I'll set color palette. It, oh, there it goes. <laughs> it was like it didn't change, but it did change. So there it goes right there. It, you, toggles are pink. Um, I go into the Play Store. As you guys can see, like I said, it's, it has more of that. I think it's a little bit more purplish here, but yeah. That's all that it really changes. There's not many apps that utilize it. More apps, obviously, will take advantage of it over time. But I personally think that it's not that big of a deal. Um, <laughs> and for people that are kind of sad that it's not on something like the One Mark Three, I don't think a feature like that fits a Sony phone. So it doesn't really bother me all that much. But, uh, yeah, that's all I really got to say about that. Material use, whatever. Um and Android 12 overall doesn't really bog down this phone. Um, Samsung features in terms of One UI 4 that are very nice to have, that are things that I've seen on like the One Mark III in particular have to do with the battery. And let me find it here real quick. So many settings. So I go into battery. And it'll, t it obviously tells you how long it will stay charged. Now this phone lasts quite a long time on standby, like two hours, two days and two, like almost three days. And for a phone that's like what, two years old, I think that's very good, especially since this is a phone that I did run through the mud a little bit in terms of like extensive use. And it's not, it's, not really, <laughs> it's not doing anything in terms of feeling like the battery has any sort of wear on it. But if you want to make sure you don't have any sort of wear, you could have the protect, you turn on the protect battery feature on. And this is very much like the one Mark three where it has, it has the feature of the battery care right here too. <laughs> and you go down. You set a custom one right here, and you can set it to when you want it to fully charge, um, and all that stuff. You do always, and you can set the battery limit to 90 or 80, so it can do a little bit more right there, but it's not. Honestly, I just have it set on auto, where depending on how many times you've had it charged throughout the day, it will tell you. Oh, we're just going to charge it to 90% until this time. And then it'll just trickle charge until it gets to that time. Um, and that's honestly pretty nice. Whereas this will just stay at a 80 at 85% battery. And that's nice. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, but it's something that <laughs> I wish you had a little bit more granular control over. Um, but it's not that big of a deal, honestly. It's just something that I wish Samsung gave you a little bit more control over. You do have enhanced processing that's always been on this phone. Um, and that's very nice. Nothing has really changed about that. I don't think performance really took that much of a hit. Um, the cameras are pretty much the same. Still very good cameras. You can still, you could do 4K 21 by 9, 60 frames per second video on this phone. And I do believe that this is one of the 
better phones to utilize for that because it's very fast in terms of its autofocus and very consistent. So that's something that I do still feel is very good about this phone. Is it my favorite in terms of like outdoor video or anything like that? No, I still don't like Samsung phones in terms of that. But in terms of like video right here or at a desk or something with a light above it, it does fairly well. And it doesn't really, especially in the pro mode, it doesn't oversaturate colors or anything like that to any sort of drastic degree. The only thing that I wish they allowed you to get to the Samsung Galaxy App Store is that expert raw mode that you can get on the newer Samsung phones. It kind of doesn't make sense that you can't get it. Understand that they basically want it to be utilized for the phones with the big booty cameras, the 108 megapixel sensors, but it would be nice to have older phones that could also utilize that too, to have more granular control over what you want to do with your photo. But overall, um, I feel like Android 12 fits this phone very well. Um, really, like I said, no issues in terms of battery life, in terms of overall operations, Wi-Fi connection and <laughs> Overall performance is still great. Samsung's not terrible at that. Apologies, my cat is kneading on the carpet. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, overall, this is a really good update. And kudos to Samsung for this. I really, it's very funny how when it comes to phone, the newer phones that Samsung has put out, I've had far more issues on those phones like the S20 FE and S21 Ultra in terms of like month to month updates and <laughs> bigger software updates. Like when the, um, when the S20 FE got Android 11, it tanked performance horrendously. And <laughs> like the camera was basically unusable. Now I don't really have any sort of issues in terms of this phone with that kind of performance at all. It's actually very consistent to how it used to be. Um, I don't do any geek bench scores or anything like that. I just focus on things that actually, that actually matter, which is day to day use and that note 10 still performs very well. This is Sparta. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the support. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday or whatever time of day it is in the area. Like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. Well, I guess that really doesn't matter anymore. You just still say it. Share with people that are interested in the sort of content. Again, go down in the comments below. Let me know what you feel. Do you have a Note 10, Note 10 Plus, older Samsung phone that may not even get this update? <laughs> let me know in the comments. Have a good one.